Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to understand the brown ring test for the nitrates in theory. So I have already uh, done this experiment and already uploaded it into my channel. If you haven't watched that video, please see the video and then understand this particular explanation. And the link to that video is given in the description. So please check out that. So in brown ring test, we check the nitrate ions present in the salt. Now you already have seen in the video that I have taken two beakers and I have taken about 200 ml of water in each beakers and half a spatula of KNO3 and FeSO4 salts I have added into both the beakers containing water respectively. Now please note that this is a distilled water. This is not the tap water we are going to use for our experiment. Now KNO3 itself is completely soluble in water. FeSO4 is not completely soluble in water but still we have managed to make the solution by shaking it. Now this salt is white in color. Now this is slight greenish in the color as you have watched in the video. Now what we are going to do is we are going to add these two solutions in this test tube like this. Now we have a mixture of KNO3 and FeSO4 plus we have water as a medium. Now there is no chemical reaction between these two. Had it been a double displacement reaction taking between these two then we could have formed K2SO4 and FeNO3 whole twice but that two salts again are soluble in water. So there won't be any kind of reactions between these two. The reaction between two salts, double displacement, only happens if one of the salts in the products is not soluble in water. Whereas over here, even if you interchange the ions, both the products are well soluble in water. So no reaction happens between these two. Concentrated sulfuric acid, its density is very large compared to the density of these two as well as water. And we are supposed to add concentrated sulfuric acid drop by drop like this. So drop by drop you are supposed to add from here from the top as you have already seen in the video and this sulfuric acid keeps on gathering at the bottom and then it is going to push this entire mixture up. Now since this is denser liquid so it is going to settle down and this entire mixture goes up due to the difference in the densities. So let me show you in a newer picture over here that this is the concentrated sulfuric acid and above it we have water plus KNO3 plus FeSO4. Now where does this reaction take place? The reaction takes place at the interface here. Now this is the area where above which you have these three substances and below which you have concentrated sulfuric acid. So this is the interface where the reaction is going to happen. Okay. So I'm going to draw KNO3 molecule over here. This is KNO3 molecule. Then one of the molecules of FeSO4. Then one of the molecules of H2SO4 are shown over here. Above this you will have these three. Below this interface you will have concentrated H2SO4. At the interface you will be having mixed molecules of this, this as well as this. Now the first reaction takes place between KNO3 and H2SO4. So that's what I'm going to write it over here. KNO3 plus H2SO4. Now what is formed is KHSO4 that is potassium bisulfate plus HNO3 nitric acid. Now these two products are also formed at the interface. So I'm going to draw one more molecule of HNO3. Now this HNO3 takes part in the reaction with H2SO4 and FeSO4 again at the interface. So the second reaction is as under HNO3 which is produced due to the reaction between these two plus we also have H2SO4 molecules plus it reacts with FeSO4. 
that is iron 2 sulfate. Now the reaction yields the following products Fe2SO4 whole thrice plus you get water plus you get nitrous oxide NO. Now this is not a balanced chemical reaction. So let me write the balanced chemical reaction. So this is the balanced chemical equation. You may just try it out. And if you want to really learn the balancing of the chemical equations, there are few videos which will be helping you out. The link is given in the description. Please check them out. Now, since we have NO, which is again formed at the interface over here. Now, just above the interface, we also have FeSO4 molecules here also. Because in this mixture, we will find a lot of H2O, KNO3 as well as FeSO4 here. Now, this NO, which is formed at the interface, that is nitrous oxide, reacts with the FeSO4 molecules just present above it. Because over here, you will have a lot of FeSO4 molecules just above this interface as well. So let me write down the third reaction that is FeSO4 plus NO. Now this yields an addition compound FeSO4 dot NO. Now this is an addition compound and now these two are actually connected with van der Waal force of attraction. There is no chemical bonding as such. We can just say a very small force of attraction between these two as in form of van der Waal forces. Now this reaction basically is a redox reaction. So you could have already spotted that the valency of Fe turns out to be changes from plus two to plus three over here. Right now this is what is the brown ring formation. Just a very small distance apart from the interface, you will be getting a brown ring over here due to the formation of FeSO4.NO, which we also call this as nitrous of ferrous sulfate. Now, you should also understand that even if you shake this entire solution a little bit, then the water molecules which are present here and the H2SO4 below this interface comes in contact. Now, that gives you a very highly exothermic reaction and due to the enormous heat generated this ring disappears you are just seeing in the picture that i have got a beautiful ring and you can see it in the 3d view as well now if you shake a little bit this ring disappears now you should understand that this test does not work for all the nitrates you could have already seen that this kno3 is a water soluble compound so the reaction between these two gives a product that is water soluble. Now had it been it is instead of KNO3 we could have taken suppose PBNO3 whole twice. Now when this reacts with this we get a precipitation reaction and the precipitates of PBSO4 whole twice are formed and that would settle down in form of a semi-solid paste. Under that situation ring formation is not going to happen. So you should understand that only those nitrates whose reaction with FeSO4 if they yield products which are soluble in water then and only then those nitrates would give you the ring test. I hope you have enjoyed the explanation. Thank you for watching the video.